Hi everyone. I wanted to make a video on atrial fibrillation, more specifically uh, catheter ablation to fix atrial fibrillation. If you don't know what AFib is or atrial fibrillation, it's when the electrical signals in your heart that tell it when to pump or how to beat aren't working right. Well, um, I first discovered that I had AFib when I was doing a little bit of boxing with my brother, uh, pulled my thumb back, tore my UCL completely, went in for pre-op and they found out that I had an irregular heartbeat and it was AFib. Um, basically AFib leads to, it can lead to dizzy spells, fainting, um, you could be tired just do, walking up a flight of stairs. Uh, the biggest risk is uh, blood clots. Um, people are much more likely, people that have AFib are much more likely to get clots and clots can lead to death or worse. You could live with a clot that cuts off the blood supply to your brain and have a, uh, a major stroke and that's certainly not a good thing so I wanted to do something about it. Now there were a couple things that I could do about it. I could um, go on medication which I did. Um, another thing I could do is have what's called an let me see if I get this right an electric cardioversion and that's where they take these defibrillators and they uh, they shock you and they restart or reboot your heart and usually it starts beating normally after a couple of tries sometimes and the problem with this is it's usually just a temporary solution it might work for a week it might work for six months or even two years but most of the people that have that procedure uh, are right back into AFib it's just a matter of time and I didn't want a band-aid I didn't want a, a quick fix I wanted this thing fixed um, I have a pretty active lifestyle so I don't really want to take any chances that said, the other thing that you can do is um, stay on medication. The problem with that is they give you blood thinners and other medication to control your heart rhythm. Uh, and the medication's pretty heavy duty. I mean, there's lots and lots of side effects. The thing I really didn't like, though, are the blood thinners, or uh, it's called warfarin, the generic name, and the name of the drug is actually Coumadin. These blood thinners, uh, they can help prevent a stroke but they're not a hundred percent effective the problem is if uh, say you get in an altercation on the road and somebody punches you in the head um, you fall off your bike while you're riding down the road or you're playing hockey and you get a stick to the head uh, you can get a brain bleed with this or if uh, you cut your arm or something like that in a car accident you're gonna bleed out pretty quickly and you may bleed out before the ambulance even gets to you now with my active lifestyle, uh, I decided I really didn't want to live the rest of my life taking these drugs. So uh, I went in for uh, my first catheter ablation in January of 2011. Uh, the procedure took a long time. It took about four to five hours. Uh, they had a lot of work to do inside there and I have some really good doctors. And um, it actually fixed my AFib for a while. I started going back into it at night and in the morning and then after a while it was permanent again I had it all the time so uh, I talked to my doctor about what to do and he recommended that um, if I was willing to have a second ablation sometimes it takes two times sometimes it takes even three ablations to correct the problem and I was perfectly willing to do that I was pretty eager to to have the second ablation and to get it over with and um, I'll tell you, it was, a, it was actually a really good experience. I went into the hospital, they prep you, they give you an IV, they do all these different things uh, to get you ready to go. And then um, here comes the drugs. Uh, sometimes they'll put a mask on you and, they'll, and then you know it's lights out in about five seconds after that. Uh, this time they had an IV. And then you wake up and it's all over. And I had absolutely no pain with this procedure. Um, I woke up and you, you wake up and you feel like you're uh, actually feel fine but you're uh, evidently still slurring your words and sounding like you're an alcoholic but um, there wasn't any pain at all uh, they pull the catheters out while you're still asleep so all in all it was a pretty good experience and I was at Cedar sinai Medical Center so I had some great doctors and some great nurses the procedure went very well however I'm two days away from uh, when I had my surgery 
and I'm back in AFib. It comes and goes, but um, it doesn't look good at this point. I talked to my doctor and he said, you know, maybe it's a false positive or, or maybe the heart's just reacting to what we did in there and to be patient. Um, but I'm not really optimistic about it. However, I'm just going to have to wait and see and, uh, and see what happens. So why do I think the operation wasn't a success this time? Let's go ahead and take my blood pressure and you'll see what I'm talking about. And the blood pressure is really high right now because uh, it's after surgery and it's it's been high for the last couple of days. Um, you'll see the little hearts on the left hand side flashing here. That means it detected an irregular heartbeat and in this case you can tell it's AFib. It's, uh, it's giving double beats and then it's pausing and resuming again. Um, gee, that is, uh, that is pretty high right there, 158 over 97. Um, my normal heart rate is about 116 over 72 so this is extremely high um, I'll check it again every hour and see what happens if I have to go back for a third ablation I will definitely do it um, I'm not afraid of it anymore I used to be uh, afraid of going into the hospital and having all this stuff done I mean it is a heart surgery they're going through catheters in your groin and they're working inside your heart and uh, statistically speaking, there's about a 1% chance you could die during the operation if they move a little bit to the left or, or whatever. Um, yeah, much better chance than winning the lottery. But uh, that's a chance that I was willing to take. Cedar sinai has an even better record. They have a stellar record on working on people with AFib. Uh, I was very happy with the surgery and the professionalism and, of the doctors and, and how it went. However, uh, it just doesn't look like I'm going to get the results that I wanted this time. Um, so for those of you thinking about having an ablation, it works 70% of the time. I'm just a hard case. Maybe my heart will start beating regularly uh, at some point in the near future. However, um, I may have to go back a third time. And if I go back a third time and they don't fix this, then that's it. That basically I'm going to just live on blood thinners for the rest of my life and deal with it. I have a lot of fight left in me and I'm going to keep fighting and whatever I need to do. So uh, if you do go ahead with an ablation, if you have atrial fibrillation or even SVT because it's the same procedure to fix both, I highly encourage you to do it. There's a really good chance that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, it's kind of just one of those things. You just have to try it and see if it works. and. Uh, hope for the best. Well this has been my experience with atrial fibrillation and uh, catheter ablation. I hope my experience is helpful to somebody. Thank you very much for listening.